My name is Ed Bork. I'm the chairman of World Watch Institute and the acting president right now. And I want to welcome you to our 33rd annual launch of the State of the World. It's the single public event we do in DC every year. And uh, so I'm really excited that you're here today. Um, we actually have a great program for you today. I think we've got some wonderful speakers. And before I dive into the program, I just want to give you an update for a few minutes about World Watch and, and what we're up to. Um, you know, our mission is called Accelerating the Transition to a Sustainable World. We've been doing that since 1974. We've published hundreds of books by now. This is our 33rd edition of State of the World. And you would think that we would be done by now, but then we know that we're actually not done. The world does not quite reach that goal. So we still have a lot of work to do with us, in front of us. So let me describe what we're doing. What we're working on is what I like to call the great challenge of the 21st century. Um, it's always amazing to me, this is not widely acknowledged in the press that we have this awesome test in front of us, and yet it's really pretty obvious. We had an extraordinary century in the 20th century. We had an explosion of human population that was unprecedented in that century, combined with the Industrial Revolution that fueled this tremendous modern lifestyle and a consumer society. So the individual impact of somebody in the modern world is much greater on the environment than somebody who lived 100 or 200 years ago, and the number of people is exploding. So the combination is exponential. And this is coming at a cost, as you all know. An extraordinary toll on the planet. So really, the challenge in this century is to transform our human civilization <coughs> in a way that we can live as a human society and now through the natural world that we really need to support us. And so really, this is what gets, up, gets us up every morning. Um, in 1900, the population of the was 1.65 billion people. Now it's 7.4 billion people. All of you with a calculator on your smartphone can figure out that's almost a 500% increase in one century. And we're not done yet. We've been working on population, but we expect it's going to top off somewhere just short of 10 billion. That's a lot of people on this planet. And the planet isn't getting any bigger. So uh, we're not the first people to tell you this. In fact, we didn't just come to this conclusion ourselves. This was really noticed about 40 years ago. And um, it's interesting, this picture I have in the background, you all recognize, is the Earth rising over the moon that was taken by the astronauts in the late 60s. And when people, the human population saw this picture on TVs and the press, it really was an earth-shaking event for them to actually see our planet. And many people credit that with triggering the first wave of the environmental movement, which followed a few years after. So you all know this is a very long list, the Environmental Protection Agency, the Clean Water Act, the Air Act in the US. The Club of Rome in Europe sponsored a book called The Limits of Growth, which was hugely read in the 70s and is still read widely, talking about the limitations of our planet. The world celebrated for Earth Day, and also in 1974, Lester Brown founded the World Watch Institute for the express purpose of talking about the limitations of our planet. But really, in all these years, we've really taken very little action. And we now recognize that in the next 40 years, we have to not only make up for lost time, but we have to really achieve the goal we set out to, to find this balance, because it's really hard to forecast the continuation of a, of a healthy civilization hundreds of years into the future unless we somehow wrestle with the impact that we're having on our planet. The good news is that I think we're entering a period of transition. I think many people in our field feel like it's not that nothing has happened. We can't go anywhere without seeing signs of change. We see solar panels. We see organic food in the market. We see some recycling. We see things happening everywhere. We see a lot of conversations. Um, and yet, the major signs are still drifting in the wrong direction. We still burn more coal every year than ever before. We still have an increasing carbon emission for every year. So we're not really pushing, pushing the needle back yet, which is really what our goal is. So. What are we doing about this? Well, our mission is to accelerate the transition to the sustainable world. The books that we've published are just aren't doing it, as you know. The books aren't going to do that by 
themselves. So in the 1970s and 80s, the way we operated is we simply alerted the world to the situation. In the 1990s, we started to talk about solutions in a general way. And now we've really changed our, our tactics completely, and we're, we're really showing detailed paths to a sustainable world to professionals who are working in the sustainability community. So right now, there are probably tens of thousands of people or more working around the world working on this goal of sustainability. And the, the challenge we set for ourselves is to do research which helps them accelerate their decisions. Um, we decided to target what we perceive to be the key drivers of unsustainability, the things that are driving us the quickest in the wrong direction, production of energy, getting to a post-fossil fuel energy system, agriculture. The, the great change in agriculture since Lester Brown started was industrial agriculture has increased the yields per acre radically, but also at an environmental cost, which is just unconscionable. So we're working on a project to rein in the environmental impact. Urban living, which obviously is what we're talking about today, and then industrial production packaging, a whole one-way trip from raw materials to the landfill. We've got to work on changing that as well. So how can we help professionals? We can help them by helping them, the leaders, and the decision makers, who are usually not the professionals themselves, helping them to visualize a sustainable outcome, helping them to see how desirable a sustainable world would be so that they start to work for it. Approving that a sustainable world is feasible. Many people doubt that it's possible. We're taking the position that it's possible, and we're making it our work to show that it would be possible to get there, but we can find the will to do so and also documenting pathways forward. What specific transformational changes can we make to get sustainability? That's, that's what we're doing now. So I'll just take another minute and talk about what we're doing with energy systems. We've worked now for six years in the Caribbean on a project to convert Caribbean nations from 100% imported fossil fuel to renewables. Um, we did some pioneering feasibility studies. Nobody had ever collected so much data. Nobody had ever made the case so completely. These were very widely read in that region. They changed the conversation. We're still down there working and getting much closer to change, which is very gratifying. Sustainable cities, probably the fastest moving sector in the environment in the environmental and sustainability movement is what cities are doing. Huge collaboration globally with city leaders. I've looked at the Global Grain Trust for ideas and for solutions. And right now they are jointly seeking an 80% greenhouse gas reduction by 2050. And almost 100 cities have signed up and made a formal pledge to do that, which is pretty extraordinary. So our interest in the greenhouse gas reduction goal is that in order to do that, you really have to get all of the sustainability goals that we would target. Reforming the power generation system, efficiency of buildings, processing waste, transportation, and the whole livability issue of cities. So um, we're pretty excited about their goal. We plan to continue this work in the future, working in specific cities, helping them develop detailed plans to achieve that goal, which, because we're a nonprofit, would be published, widely read, by other city professionals who would hopefully learn from our work. Uh, sustainable agriculture, I'll just say, we're really trying to get to something that we call regenerative agriculture. Agriculture which rebuilds the ecosystem, food growing inside the biosphere, really for millions of years until the last 50 years, that's how agriculture is done. Now we have sterile monocultures that are artificially irrigated. And so it's not only a chance to create ecosystems in agricultural areas, but also to a huge opportunity to sequester carbon back into the soil that's been lost in the last 50 years. So that's what we're up to. I'd love to talk about this with anybody <coughs> later on. It's my turn to turn this over to the next speaker, who is Gary Gardner. Gary's been with us for 20 years. He's our director of publications. He's one of the three co-directors of this state of the world. And you'll meet all three of them in the next three speakers. I'm um, going to talk about visions for a sustainable city. Uh, it's my job to remind you that if you look at your agenda, there's one break for 
exchanging fluids and making phone calls. So um, we have an ongoing book signing all day. So we've got many of the authors here today if you'd like to get your book signed. And at 5 p.m. we have a reception out here with refreshments where it would be just great to catch up with everybody and say hello. So I hope you stick around. So thank you very much. I appreciate your coming. I turn this over to Gary Gardner. Thanks.